we must stay true to the true doctrine of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That everything that happens in life is the will of God. That's why we pray your kingdom come, your will be done. You have a destiny with Jesus Christ. It's what Jesus accomplished at the cross for you. It's what he accomplished by the shedding of his blood. Well, praise the Lord and welcome to another show called Times of Refreshing. I'm Pastor John Shedd and I'm glad to be here today. And today I've got, I'm excited because uh, I have my assistant pastor uh, with me today, Pastor Cheryl Stevens, and we're just gonna be talking uh, back and forth a little bit and she's gonna share her testimony and uh, some of the trials and the struggles that we all have had uh, in our Christian walk. Uh, and uh, I'm just excited to have her here today. So uh, take a few moments, uh, go get your Bibles and uh, we're just gonna get right into the Word of God and just, uh, uh, just see how good uh, God is in our life. But let's open up with a uh, word of prayer first. Heavenly Father, today we thank you for all the blessings that you poured into our lives. We thank you for the people that you brought into our lives. Uh, we praise you and we worship you and we just, uh, every single day of our lives, uh, we give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Uh, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, today, before we get started and get talking to Pastor Cheryl, I just want to share uh, a scripture with you uh, and, and talk about the Lord for a, for a moment. And it's found in the, uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and it uh, starts at verse 6. And uh, it says, it's impossible, it's impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. We have to exercise our faith in order to grow with God, in order to do anything with God, but more importantly, to please God. So the writer of Hebrews says, without faith it is impossible uh, to please God. And then he says, and this is what's interesting, he says, anyone that comes to him or anyone that comes to God must first believe that God exists and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently or really seek him. You know, I see uh, sometimes in our world today that uh, we go to church on Sundays and uh, we say our uh, prayer before meals and uh, we do the right thing and, and everything, and, and, uh, but we sometimes put God up on a, on a box and we just pull him out on Sundays, but we really don't expect him to alter our way, way of life. But the writer here says, uh, it's impossible to please God without faith. But I think more importantly, he says, if we're gonna come to him, we have to believe. We have to really believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder to those that seek him. God is our father. Think about that. He is our father and he wants good things to come into our life. He wants to reward us. He wants to bless us. He wants to show favor on us. But we first have to believe, really believe, that he will do what he says he will do. And then I'm gonna turn over real quick to uh, 2 Timothy. Paul's writing a letter to Timothy. And uh, in chapter three, and starting at verse 16, he says, all scripture, all scripture, is under the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction into righteousness. That the man of God, that's you and me, that's anybody that's born again, male or female, that the man of God may be perfect or complete or whole, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And then he charges Timothy in chapter 4. He says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Preach the word. We're all called to preach the word. To share the love of Jesus Christ with our, with our lips and, and with our actions and with our love and with our kindness. Our whole being. And we're, ready to, we're supposed to be uh, ready in season and out of season to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and diligence. Praise God. The word of God is true. 
Jesus said, uh, I am the way and I am the truth and, and I am, am the life and no man, nobody gets to the Father but through me. Well, at this time, uh, before I start talking too much, I want to introduce my uh, assistant pastor, Pastor Cheryl Stevens. Uh, she's been with us uh, for a number of years now. And Cheryl, I'd just like for you to uh, take a few moments and just uh, share with the audience uh, your testimony and how you came to know the Lord and uh, uh, anything else of interest. Well, I was raised in a, and first of all, thank you for asking me to come to the show today. Um, it's an honor. <laughs> um, I was raised in a, a denominational church mm -hmm. and went to church every Sunday and really had a love for the Lord as a young child, but didn't quite know uh, what to do with that. I felt God's presence uh, when I was in my bedroom. Uh, just, uh, I would lay there and just uh, sense God's presence, but just really didn't know what that was really all about. And uh, in my family, we didn't really talk about God between Sundays, um, and I didn't read my Bible when I was a child. Uh, but a couple things happened when I was uh, in a teenager. Um, a couple people came to our church, and they, there was a specifically a young man, and he talked about God as if he actually knew God. And that just really created a, mm -hmm. a desire mm -hmm. in my heart, like, what is that all about? He acts like he actually knows this God that we can't see. And, and I just really wanted that, but didn't know how to get there. And through a series of circumstances, we uh, went to a, a different church with some friends, visited a new church, and, and the assistant pastor came over and he talked about being saved. And he asked me, he said, are you saved? And I said, no. And he said, well, how do you know that? And I said, well, I figure if I, if I was saved, I would know it. And I don't know it, so I must not be saved. Just a simple prayer that really uh, just basically said, Lord, you know, I'm a sinner, I know I'm a sinner, uh, come into my heart, um, change my life, and oh, he did. He answered in a big way that day. It was like I was looking through the, uh, the world uh, through rose-colored glasses almost. It was like, like a new light just came so, on. So what, what happened is here, you went, you went from a, a state of, uh, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but mm -hmm. you put from a state of religion, because mm -hmm. you went to church yes. all the time, as most of us did. We go to church and, and we do what we're supposed to do regardless of the denomination. But then one day yes. you met yes. the King of Kings and, yes. and the Lord of Lords. Yes. So how, how did this transform your life at the very beginning? I think it was just that all of a sudden when I would, I would read the Bible, it, it came alive to me. Before it was just kind of boring and I had no mm -hmm, really idea mm -hmm. what it was all about and so forth. It was like all of a sudden it made sense. And I think the Holy Spirit, you know, really has to quicken that word to us, enlighten us in that word. And I just couldn't get enough of reading my Bible. I just read about God all the time. I loved the mm -hmm. word. And that was really exciting to me. And um, I started to pray. And, uh, that, and then I went through a lot of... Uh, I had a friend that was uh, excellent with uh, inner healing, healing of mm -hmm. the heart, mm -hmm. all the things that uh, childhood puts on us. Um, I was very shy when I was a child and so forth. And there was just a lot of hurts from other kids and so forth and, and uh, just prayers that would just, you know, heal my heart from all those times that uh, I went through when I was, a, I was a child, even though I had a good childhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting that you know, sometimes, you know, we all go through things uh -huh. uh, and, and we go through all kinds of hurts and we go through uh, situations in our, in our life that uh, we just wonder how we're, how we're going to make it in, into the next day. Uh, and when we have a relationship with, uh, with Jesus, mm -hmm. he can kind of uh, pave the way for us mm -hmm. to uh, and, and show us the way. You know, he said, he said, I'm the way and I'm the truth and I'm the life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think sometimes we, we, we don't uh, actually know what those three words means. You know, uh -huh. when we've lost our way uh -huh. or when we don't even, didn't even know uh, there was a way when we were just going to church every Sunday. Uh -huh. You know, but Jesus said, you know, when you've lost your way or, or when things are getting messed up or when things are getting confusing, that all falls under that word, the way. Uh -huh. when he says, I am the way, you know, and, 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 yeah. and in life today, um, so many things can get so haywire, we don't even know what truth is. I always remember uh, Pontius Pilate, when he was questioning Jesus, he actually came out and says, what is truth? And I think, you know, in the world today, that's a, that's mm -hmm. a question many people ask. What is truth? And Jesus comes out and says, I am the truth, yes. uh, and, and I am the life. Well, yes. Cheryl, uh, 
you, uh, for a long time, you know, you were serving the Lord mm -hmm. and, and everything was going good. But, you know, mm -hmm. we know that, and I know there's some people out there, and, and you're going to, uh, you're going to listen to to a part of this testimony uh, that Cheryl's going to going to share a little bit, and I'm going to ask her to share uh, uh, that you, you've tried to do all the right things, and and you try to uh, to trust God, and you tried to believe in God, and 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 and, and you read the Word of God, and you uh, you you followed Him as as, as good as you could, uh, but then uh, life just kind of. I hate to even use the word because it throws you a curveball, but not just a curveball. It, it it knocks you completely, mm -hmm. completely out of out of whack with with everything, and you start to wonder, where is God? And, and I know there's somebody out there today. You know, you 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 you're trying to serve God, but some of the things that have happened uh, in your life, you just question where is God? And Cheryl, you know, I hate to bring up you know bad times or anything <laughs> like that, but you were serving the Lord faithfully and, and, and everything and, and I know this is this is tough for you to share but I, there's there's people out there that uh, that are going through similar things mm -hmm. and and they need to they need to know that uh, once you turn your life over to the Lord that not everything just just works out perfectly uh, for a time being so would mm -hmm. you share just a little bit on how you went in the, the valley that you yes. went into well, there was a pivotal year in our lives. Um, I was married to a different man. My, my husband and I were serving the Lord in a very good church, a, a Bible-believing church. Um, during that one year, um, we had several deaths in the family from close relatives. Um, my uh, husband of that time lost an aunt, uh, his grandpa, his dad, uh, quite unexpectedly of all of them. I lost an aunt and an uncle, uncle very unexpectedly. My best friend moved away. Our pastor was diagnosed with cancer. It was the start of a, a split in our church, um, and I won't go into the details of that, but um, uh, it was just a very rough time. And my uh, husband of that time did not take all of that well, and I didn't either. Um, I was uh, not understanding why when we were serving mm -hmm, him, actually mm -hmm. probably at our peak, uh, up to that time in our lives, how all this could go wrong at once. And my heart was so heavy from the loss of our loved ones and, and our pastor with cancer and so forth. And, and I think it just it sent us kind of reeling backwards. At that time, I didn't quite know how to gain strength because um, even though I loved the word and uh, you know, prayed, most of my prayers still at that time were, Lord, deliver me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lord, deliver me. And I didn't quite know how to gain the strength from Christ to, to walk through that. And so unfortunately, after a, a certain a period of time, I got disillusioned. Um, I, I started to kind of question, God, where are you? And, you know, why aren't you mm -hmm. getting us through this and, and so forth? And, and why did all this happen? Why did it have to happen? I was kind of like um, when Lazarus died. Lord, if you'd have been here, this wouldn't have happened, you know? And uh, it was just a really rough time in our lives. And I backslid. Mm -hmm. And I fell into a lot of sin. And, uh, you know, I just thought, if this is what serving God's all about, I don't want a part of it. Uh, just wasn't understanding the whole thing. You know, Cheryl, you know, and, and I'm, I want you to continue on with this, but, you know, I, and I don't mean to put down, uh, you know, we watch the television shows, because this is a television show here, but uh, sometimes we, you know, the, the television evangelists, you know, they come across, uh, and to be honest with you, they, they tell you that once you start serving the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, Everything, everything's going to everything's going to be perfect, and and everything's going to be rosy, and and life is just going to be great <coughs> and, and fantastic. And uh, uh, but sometimes you know we get in there and we think we're doing everything that we're supposed to do for the Lord, and things be beyond our control uh, happen. You know, just like. Uh, we, you know, I, I believe in divine healing. I know you believe mm -hmm. in divine healing. I, I believe in uh, divine d deliverance, uh, and and I know you believe that, mm -hmm. and, and all these great things, uh, the miracles of, of God. But uh, uh, sometimes we lose people that we love uh, 
uh, through sickness and through disease. And sometimes that deliverance just doesn't happen overnight at the snap of a finger. You know, anybody that's, that's tried to give up smoking, you, you know that, you know, you sure love reading those testimonies. You know, how you never craved it a day in your life after you turned your life to the Lord. Well, that didn't work for me. I battled and I battled and I battled. But, you know, through through Christ, you know, we, we overcame it. But it was not an easy battle. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and when you, when you lose someone, uh, to sickness or, or, or disease or, or something like that, uh, it can really crush your faith. It, can. it mm-hmm. really can because mm-hmm. you think you're doing everything right and you're doing everything according to the word. So I just want you to continue on because the last word I heard you say, and we've all been there, you backslid. I backslid. Yes. We backslid. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just got dissolution with what we thought or who we thought God was and that yes. he was going to take care of everything that happens in our life mm-hmm. and it doesn't always work out that way. It brings you to that crisis of faith, I call it, a mm-hmm. crisis of faith, where you're either going to believe God, believe his truths, believe he's a good God. And John, um, I've said several times to you that you, you really brought it into a perspective to me. God isn't good when things are going good and then bad right. when things are going. God is always good. Circumstances may not be good. People may not always treat us right, but God is Amen. always good. Amen. And that's the faith that we stand on is he is good and he is there for us. Um, and that love is unconditional. And I was a people pleaser. I was a person that thought I had to earn mm-hmm. love. And so that's the way I was treating God. If I do everything right, if I go to church, if I serve the Lord and so forth, then he's just going to bless my life and I'm not going to have any more problems. That was just really delusional. That's not the way the world works. We live in a fallen world. Um, And there will be a day, Mm -hmm. (laughs) there will be a day when that happens. But right now, God walks with us through it. And and, uh, we uh, just, yes, I backslid, um, fell into sin and so forth. And it was a, a, a long haul in there. Um, in fact, you I quit going to church. You quit going to church. Quit going to church. Quit Didn't reading the Bible. Quit everything. Said yeah. I'll never walk in church again. Except Can anybody for a relate funeral. to that? <laughs> I'll never walk. I'll never go to church again. If this is the way Christians are, if this is the way God is, I just don't want any part of it. And yet, I didn't lose the fact that I knew mm-hmm. that God was God. And there was a, a time down the road where I realized that I can't live without him. I can't. There's a hole in my heart, in my soul, when God isn't there, you can try to fill it with mm-hmm. things of the mm-hmm. world. Um, we did, you know, the bars, the karaoke, the drinking and so forth, and thought we were having a great time, but you know, it didn't fill that hole in my heart. Only God can fill that. And that's the way the devil is. He'll, he'll throw yeah. stuff into our life that, uh, you know, it, it seems so fantastic and mm-hmm. the, the laughter and the, and the joy and all yeah. that stuff, but it's just for a season. Mm-hmm. It's just for a season. It's yeah. delusional. It's delusional. It's, it's a deception. It's a big deception. And those that are still trying to fill that hole with everything else, it just does not work. God is the only one that can fill that, that place in our hearts. He's created that place mm-hmm. in us mm-hmm. so that we keep hungering for him and desiring for him. It, you know, that brings me back to our to the scripture that I started with. Now, I didn't know this was going to work out this way, but isn't God good? Amen. Okay. Uh, in Hebrews eleven six, but without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God for he that comes to God or he that believes in God must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So even through the rough times, mm-hmm. we have to believe that God is a good God and either circumstances that we cause, sometimes we make bad choices. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just make bad choices <laughs> yeah. and, and, and we know we should have done better. Or we should have prayed about it. And I mean, I could tell you, I could go on for hours uh, on bad decisions that, that, that I made and I still make. You just, you just get, get uh, unconsciously do something that you should have spent some time uh, and, and prayed about. Uh, but the idea is that whether it's decisions that we, we've made or beyond our control, mm-hmm. it's decisions somebody else has made or choices that they made that uh, uh, intersect into, into our lives. And now we have to, have to deal with it. But the, the fact is that we live on enemy territory. Mm-hmm. And Jesus himself said, Jesus himself said, in John chapter 10 and verse 10, the, the thief has come only to rob, to kill, yes. and destroy. 
That's what Jesus said. And if he says it, we better listen to what he says. Mm -hmm. But he, he doesn't end there. He says, but I've come to give you life yes. and life in abundance. Amen. So now, now that you, you started out on top, you accepted Jesus, uh, everything's just going great and you're learning the word of God, you're devouring the word of God, and then circumstances happen. Now you're in the, in Psalm 23, the valley of the shadow of death. And now you're in that, in that valley. Mm -hmm. But what happened? Did you stay there? What happened? It was really interesting. I, I, I got a job in a uh, uh, town near here. And um, the interesting thing about it, I, I recognized that God started to seek me. Mm -hmm. And that meant so much to me. Uh, my boss, um, didn't know him when I started working, was a Christian. Amazing, huh? And then one day I was on the computer at work and I found a website um, that was within the company that I worked for, a large company. And the website was a prayer. Um, uh, you could put your prayer requests mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. that. And I thought, wow, how does this happen? That you know, that doesn't yeah. happen. And then I changed jobs within the company, went to a whole different building. And the very day that I started that job, at a, a, my noon hour, there were several noon hours because it was a large company. There were several uh, hundreds of workers. And, uh, but at that time, they started a Bible study. And something drew me to that Bible study and to those people. Something drew you? Something drew me. <laughs> I think it was the I think Holy we know Spirit. what that is. <laughs> and so I started going to the Bible study. And then in that Bible study, they reminded me of a Christian radio station. Well, uh, that particular job I had was I, I could work all hours. I mean, uh, during certain parts of the season, we would work an hour late, two hours late, and a half an hour late. And every time I came home, I would turn on that radio, that Christian radio station. And it didn't matter whether it was a song or a speaker of some mm -hmm, kind, a, mm -hmm. a pastor, somebody talking. It spoke to my heart. And I spent so many nights crying all the way home because God was beginning to show me that he loved me, mm -hmm. that he uh, wanted that relationship with me that I had given up. And, and uh, I remember one particular song by Dallas Holm, and it was, uh, the words were, I saw the Lord <laughs> and he sees me. And I thought, insignificant me who has turned my back, but God sees me. And I can remember the tears just started flowing. And I think it started to melt my heart. <laughs> and God, the fact that he would seek me out and give me just the message I mm -hmm. needed for that time, um, I realized that God loved me and I hadn't done a thing yeah, to deserve yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Not one thing. In fact, I had worked against yeah. it mm -hmm. and I couldn't separate myself from his love. That's the goodness of God. He loves us no matter where we are in our life, but, and no matter what we've done. And also, uh, and I know your testimony, that's why I can, you know, I, I can mm -hmm. kind of you know, say this. Uh, <clears throat> somebody who loved you mm -hmm. invited you back to church. Mm -hmm. Share, share a little bit about that because yes. you know, the, the Bible says you know, that without faith, it's impossible to, uh, uh, to please God and, and that we got to believe that he is and we have to, uh, to reach out. And I think Paul told Timothy, uh, preach the word, be ready in season, out of season. There's hurting people out there and we've been hurt and somebody helped us back. Now it's our job to go back and help other people out, mm -hmm. and someone did that for you. Share that a little bit. Actually, before that, um, I had decided, you know, I wasn't gonna step back in church. Mm -hmm. But there was a women's uh, fellowship that I had belonged to, Women's Aglow Fellowship, and um, I decided I, was, I would go there. I would go there, because mm -hmm. I didn't want to step back in church. And when I was there, I went up for prayer. I don't even know who the speaker was, because I went up for prayer, and because, uh, the, the whole time that I was in sin, I had hurt so many people, but I also had been hurt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so um, I just went to ask for prayer so that I could start to love people again. That was, my, that was mm -hmm. my request, I went up. And the speaker started to pray for me and stopped and said, the Lord is telling me, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. See the guilt and the shame of of mm -hmm. that backslidden life, that sinful life that I had fallen back into, was eating me up. And God's word to me was, 
I don't condemn you. Mm -hmm. I love you, you know. And that just uh, really ministered to me. Well, then I was doing a personal Bible study at home, and I read these words. Um, the church is not, you are not complete. The church is not complete without you. You are not complete without the church, but the church is yeah, not complete right. without you. Right. We need each other. Mm -hmm. We need each other. And so that's how I decided I would start to go back to church. So I said, Lord, I don't know where to go. You know, I have no idea where to go to church. We live in a little tiny town. And um, at that time, there was no spirit-filled. I knew I wouldn't be happy. I, I wanted a spirit-filled church. Mm -hmm. And I um, just said, Lord, I don't know where to go. And an old friend of mine called me up almost immediately after that prayer. Lord, I don't know where Isn't to go. Isn't it interesting how God works? <laughs> God yeah. just moves right in. Okay, we call, sure. We call it coincidences, it but we not. know that I, I don't believe in coincidences. No, no. It's a, it was a God yeah. appointment type. And she called me up and said, come just to, uh, it was a little, uh, we were getting together. You were, the church was getting together on Thursday morning or something. And just for a little Bible study and share mm -hmm, time and mm -hmm. worship time. And, um, so that's when I got started going to your church, and it just felt like home. It just felt like that refreshing, uh, yeah, <laughs> that refreshing. Yeah. What Cheryl's telling you today is that the devil, if he can't beat us at his game and, and, and pull us down into a world of sin and keep us there, he will also try a, another tactic, and that is that Everything's supposed to be great when you're a Christian. Everything's supposed to work out. And, and when it doesn't, it gets very, very, very frustrating. But you know, the, the truth of the matter is we're all broken. Yes. We're all hurt. We've all messed up. You read, read about any of the men or women in the Bible and you'll find out they are all not necessarily failures, but they failed. They made mistakes and God resurrected yes. them. I just love it where Jesus to touch Peter three times. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Because he was taken away the three times yes. that Peter denied Jesus. Yes. Cheryl, we don't have much time left, mm -hmm. but would you look into the camera? There's somebody out there today, I know it, that they're hurting and they're struggling and they're going through guilt and condemnation. Mm -hmm. Would you just pray mm -hmm. for them, whoever mm -hmm. they might be, whatever yes. their name might be, just pray for them yes. and lift them up because yes. you know what it's been like. You went from the top, the valley, and then back up again, mm -hmm. Lord's brought you through it. Would you just mm -hmm. say a prayer? Father, I just thank you. Um, just like Job, who just had one thing bad after another uh, be reported to him. But when, when God finally revealed himself to Job, Job said, before I had heard about you, but now I've seen you with my own eyes. It's the difference between knowing about God and the difference between knowing God thank as a you, personal Jesus. God. Thank you, Lord, that you love that person out there who, who maybe knew you at one time and has backslidden, done things, and think, well, there's no hope for me to, to be a, a Christian again or to, to, to come into fellowship again. Lord, I pray for that person. I pray, Lord, that you will melt their heart. And mostly, Lord, that you would make your love, your love so real to them. Reveal yourself to them, Lord, in a real way. Know that um, you have forgiven them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you forgive and you redeem. Thank you, Jesus. God loves you, and so do we.